We've got barbecue back here. Part two. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing fine. You know, I'm I'm not gonna I, I don't know how Buckeye I don't know how Buckeye Nation is going to react to this game um on a Monday morning, quite frankly. Um, it was a game that yeah, was less than spectacular through the first half. This is definitely a slow start for Ohio State. Uh, it was a Maryland team who I personally underestimated. Um, they had not played anybody. Um, but to Kyle's point during Know Your Enemy last week, he said, well, the teams they played, they handled the way you should handle teams like that. And yeah, Kyle was right. Kyle was right. And that's okay. Um, but we didn't know. We didn't really know who Maryland was. They hadn't really played anybody. Um, and I, they were better than I was expecting and good for them. I, I think, I think they're good enough to potentially upset Penn state. Uh, they play Penn state like a rival, even though Penn state doesn't consider them a rival. They, they play Penn state like they're a rival. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of, kind of like our relationship with Penn State, but <laughs> yeah. in reverse, obviously. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how Ohio State fans are going to react to this game. Is this a? Ah, eh, we started kind of slow, but we piled it on at the end. So win column, all's well that ends well. All's well that ends well. You know, you cover, you win by twenty. You know, the 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 numbers seem to fluctuate somewhere in between 20 and 18 during the course of the week. So it seems like no matter where you got in. Well, unless you got in at 20, I suppose, because it would have been 20 and a half. So maybe they didn't cover depending upon when when you placed your bet. So tw 20 but according, according to the sloop picks, they were 18 and a half. So, so a tw 20 point 20 point victory over a five and O team. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it's it just, it's just a sour sour taste on in a in a lot of people's mouths here. You you look at the first half here. Hosty only got twenty eight yards in that first quarter. Not good bad. at all. Bad bad. McCord went two for seven for fourteen yards. The only had only had fourteen yards rushing in that first quarter. Yeah, it was like. Very bad. There was a it was a very bad first quarter there. Second quarter, they, they started getting momentum and Ohio State uh started finding finding key key players making plays there. And obviously the uh Proctor getting the interception uh return for a touchdown was the turning point in this game here. But but from that point forward, it was it was pretty much all all Ohio State. Uh they, they went on they went on a what was it? A 27 point. Yeah, it was a 27 straight points to to finish the game there. So it took them a while to figure out how to stop Maryland. And or, or was it stat here that I, I wrote down here? Yeah, the, in the last 26 minutes of the game here, Ohio State held Maryland to 31 yards, 31 right. yards in the last pretty much quarter, quarter and a half, almost a quarter and a half here. Where, so you, where, where Maryland only had one first down. And by the way, uh, so a, a conversation that was happening in the discord and, and this might be a fun game to play, Kyle. This Sorry. might be a fun game to play. Uh, a fun thing that people were noticing in the discord is like all the different headlines in regards to Ohio State, Maryland. Uh, CBS said that Maryland blew out Ohio State. Excuse me. Other way around that Ohio State blew out Maryland. Um, one of the local, I don't even remember who it was and it doesn't matter, but one of the local Buckeye blo blogs said that Ohio state scraped by against Maryland, which to be fair, I don't think either of those headlines are accurate. I don't, I don't think Ohio state blew out Maryland and I, and I don't think that they scraped by Maryland either. So I, I think, uh, maybe a fun game, Kyle, uh, potentially a fun game to, Ball game has four quarters. 
Well, ball game also has a final score. <laughs> uh, what's your game, Jared? So, yeah, what, what's your headline for this game? What's my headline here? Headline to me in this game was us stay in Kyle McCord off to a slow start, come, but comes alive in the second half to to handily defeat Maryland by 20 points. And so it's a really long headline, Kyle. It um, is. I, I, I think I agree with the sentiment of your of your headline. And then then you can, can just short. I you think can we just can, short. You, you can just shorten it. Ohio State and, and McCord um, slow start, but comes alive in the second half. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. Ohio State starts slow, but finishes strong against Maryland would be my headline. Yeah, so it's. I mean, you got to you got to give you got to give credit to um, to Maryland there, especially uh, to Aaliyah. He he played. Are you having he trouble played, hearing Kyle? Florida Buck. He, he played. Or, he played. He played, a, he played a heck. Of, he played a heck of a game. Um, yeah, he played a heck of a game here. I'm trying to pull up the the stats real quick here. Yeah, he started off really really strong here and and then again credit to Ohio State finding finding out how to stop him in that second half and he it was something ridiculous like he had oh let me let me pull up here I should have had this already here so in the first so in the first half he he was he had 140 yeah he had 144 yards in that first half but ended up only 50 yards in the second half. So I mean, I mean credit to the coaching staff to make that halftime adjustments right. to to stop uh to stop Maryland here. Cuz that, that's second. all Maryland could that's all Maryland could do was pass. Ohio State's defense was on point here holding holding Maryland to 106 yards on 35 carries, so about 3 yards per carry there. So really really good job by this defense here. Right. And I think that's a thing we've seen with the defense as well um, through the course of the season so far is they, they, they tend to play a bit loose early in the game, sort mm -hmm. of bend, but don't break early in the game. But then as the game progresses, they, they seem to get more and more aggressive. So they, they, they start off very bend, but don't break, but start to dial up the pressure as the game as the game goes and by the time you get to the fourth quarter they're blitzing all over the place and they're stifling the run it's a thing um I, I don't know if it's i don't know if it's a matter of depth maybe depth taking over as the game goes or if this is a deliberate technique being employed um by the defensive coaching staff where they're just increasing the aggressiveness increase increasing the pressures the game goes along uh but it but it's a thing that i've i've noticed and uh another thing i would say is this is now the second game in a row in which ohio state has held a top flight highly experienced uh is that passing attack team well quarterbacks well I, but i was gonna i was i got stuck for a second it is is baby to is he a fifth or a sixth year quarterback um I, I got stuck for a second i forgot um i actually don't just don't know but point is is that two highly experienced quarterback a sixth year and maybe another sixth year or a sixth year and a fifth year quarterback um both of whom we're putting up Heisman esque numbers prior to coming up against Ohio state and Ohio state held both of those quarterbacks to 200 under 200 yards passing. Yeah, this, and, this defense, yeah, this defense is for real. Like this is, this is the kind of defense that wins championships here. This like, we're, I think I can safely, you, we can safely say here we're five games in here played some, Played um a pretty good Maryland team. Played a pretty good 
Notre Dame team here, and I, I think you can safely Western say Kentucky. that this well, you can safely say that this Ohio State defense is for real. The silver bullets are back. And yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how the rest of the year plays out. And do not underestimate Western Kentucky from an offensive standpoint either. Yeah, true. So the defense has got to figure it out. But it's the other it's the other side of the of the ball there, Jared. Um, so, so somebody asked somebody asked is, earlier somebody asked earlier here, Jared, the um to us earlier on Sunday here. Is this out before of the ask, before cast mailbag? Hmm. Before before I ask uh, ask the question here, Ohio State thirty three rushes, sixty two yards under yeah. two yards per carry. Yeah. Uh Azil, I think is how we how we um, decided to <laughs> to call him here. He says, "Do we think the run game can at least improve some?" Azul, Azil, Az 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 uh, in yes. the in the in the discord server um sorry say the question again i got caught up on the name do we think the run game can at least improve some and i i think i think you look at that last part there some can and can can improve some i don't know i it's, it's a great question i and i don't know uh, at, at a certain point, when do you give up on the running game? Which is not what Ryan Day wants to do. It's something mm -hmm. that Ryan Day really, really, really doesn't want to do. Yeah. And you see, he's trying to make different different formations, trying to trying to get different different looks here. And it's just not working. It's just not working here. So, so the question is, is there anything that can that can improve this offensive line here? Like I know back not in two back in two thousand back in two thousand blocking offensive line. No, back in two thousand fourteen, we were all ready to throw the season out because of how terrible the offensive line was. But that was only week two or three. Here we are after week five, well, week six, depending on whatever week you were looking Ohio at. Ohio State's here. Ohio State's week five. Right. Is, is it ready to push the panic button for this offensive line? Uh, from a run. So we're talking strictly from a run blocking. And by the way, they weren't good. They weren't a good pass blocking unit either. Like people getting mad at Kyle McCord because I think the only thing they can do is get mad. Some fans don't have the creativity to get mad at anything other than the quarterback and the play calling. Um. But the offensive line uh, was was also failing from a pass blocking standpoint as well. Um, and and I know that someone's going to say, yeah, but Kyle McCord was panicking and getting rid of the ball even when he didn't have pressure on him. Can you blame yeah. him? Yeah. Can you it, blame him? <laughs> A, a young quarterback who's been facing pressure all year, he's going to have an accelerated clock in his head. Blocking scheme or toughness, talent. Um, neither of those. The, the issue is, is talent. Um, there's a reason why they got rid of Coach Stud, because he had many recruiting misses. Uh, Ohio State had several recruiting classes where the offensive line classes were just not good enough. And that's why they replaced him. Um, and especially at tackle where Ohio State's biggest, but not only issues, but some of Ohio State's biggest issues are right now. You can't, you know, you can go get, you know, a Carnell Tate. Carnell Tate would be, getting three or four catches a game on most any other team in the country right now at wide receiver. If you're having wide receiver issues and you can bring in a Carnell Tate, 
Well, then then your wide receivers are looking a lot better all of a sudden. Hell, even at quarterback, you can go get a freshman quarterback plug a freshman quarterback in or a corner. You can go get a freshman corner and plug in a freshman corner right away and have them help out right away. Offensive tackle, you can't do that. And we've seen some O-line. And and we've seen some from um, previous experience as well, Jared, is that you can't just get a interior lineman and, and if they're really good, put them out and tackle and they're going to do well. We've seen that firsthand a few years ago. Or vice versa, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes if you're a deep at tackle, you can't just stick your, your your deep tackles at guard and have that necessarily work either. Um yeah, the, the team, the offensive line, when running the ball, does not play with leverage. Uh they do not push the other team off the ball. They do not get to the second level. They do not get off of their they, you know. But, and that's why we see them you struggle don't, they on don't short get to the second yeah well but then the reason why you even see them struggle on like a wide play is because the offensive linemen aren't getting the push necessary in order to get you know you start with a double team and then you you know the guy on the outside then goes off and then gets the linebacker they're not they're not winning the double teams well enough to get to the linebackers and hell you know, and Ryan Day, to his credit, they're trying other things. You know, they'll run like a GT pool. Well, the GD offensive linemen don't know how to turn up and go through the hole. Um, the the offensive line's bad right now. Um, and at a certain point, and I know Ryan Day doesn't want to do this. At a certain point, you got to ask yourself, you know, when when do we just sort of become an air raid offense? Because as the how McCord's good enough and the wide receivers are good enough that they can work around having an iffy offensive line. But with the run game, you you just can't work around having an iffy offensive line. Now, if you start to spread teams out. Well, then you can start getting some success running the ball through some draws or through some, you know, some some dives out of the shotgun, just like running when they're not expecting you to run, because I'm sorry, we're not going to muscle teams off the ball. Not not the good teams. No, and and now you got to worry about the upcoming games against Penn State and, and Michigan here. Is something that or something that Coach Days really was trying to emphasize this offseason is that toughness, that ability to get those yard short yardage when they need to, that they've struggled to do the past couple of years. And here we are, year three, still struggling here. And yeah, a lot of it is talent that Ohio State has missed on the offensive line here, but yeah, it's it's just frustrating because you you see you see the talent in all the other positions here on the offense, but it doesn't matter how good of running backs, how good of receivers you have here. If your offensive line doesn't block well, both rushing and on passing plays here, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you have five Marvin Harrisons out on the field. It's not going to do any good. Uh, Woody says no excuses really work for this O line. Fry should be having our O line work angles, more traps, more pin and pull to get leverage. They're trying, man. They're they're trying those things. I mean, again, like the team doesn't even pull well. We saw they aren't really trying traps basically at all. I I the the but. They don't even pull well, is my point. It's more pull into space. I, I know. But I don't know, man. It's. I don't know if throwing new concepts, this offensive line is 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 the fix either. I think is my point. 
Um, we can't block linebackers to save our lives. Yeah. Um, it doesn't take talent to get off a block to get to a linebacker, though. It's more effort. No. If you're not winning the double team. Then you aren't going to get to the linebacker. If you aren't able to double team the defensive tackle, get him off the ball, then have your outside offensive linemen get to the next level. But if you're just not winning the double team, then you aren't getting to the next guy. If you aren't winning the double team, you shouldn't be at Ohio State. Yeah. But that's that's the situation we find ourselves in. Uh, due to some uh, consistent failures in the recruiting standpoint and recruiting the offensive line. Mm. That's just, that's the reality we find ourselves in right now. So some final thoughts here, Jared, and then we'll get to our, our grading here. I'll say a lot of it, a lot of it repeating what we just said about the offensive line here. I'll say it has to do better on third downs three for 12 in this game, not going to cut it here in a couple of weeks when they, when they host Penn State, penalties, 10 penalties for 81 yards, unacceptable, unacceptable here, just dumb penalties, and yeah, it, it's just got to gotta clean, gotta clean that up there. Penalties kill drives, and we saw that a number of times already this year. Yeah, it, it's, just, it's just frustrating just to see that Ohio State should be dominating the short yardage, and they're not, and they're committing dumb penalties, killing drives as well. I, I I thought a couple of the longer yard penalties against Ohio State were bad calls, but whatever. We don't really talk about refs on this. But show. but the good thing, but the good thing though, Jared, even even with a dinged up Marv Marvin Harrison Jr., it's still <laughs> he's he's still dominate he still dominates. What what did he end up having? He ended up having. Oh, I did not save it in that view. He ended up with 163 yards, eight eight catches, and a and a touchdown, um, two touchdowns. If you if you want to if you want to do the funny thing there, but four for four on on red zones, two of those touchdowns. So I'd like to see that be a little bit better, but they're they're getting points in the red zone at least. So improvements, a l- little bit of improvements here, but still long long ways to go here. Right. right. Uh, I mean, and, and by the way, uh, Austin says just throw the ball 50 times a game. Genuinely. Yeah. May, maybe you joined after I said, at what point do you switch to an air raid style offense? Which is yeah. something I said maybe before you got here. It's horrible to. And now the answer is now. Maybe uh, Woody says it's horrible to watch our experienced guards slide down the line of scrimmage. Blocking no one on a toss sweep, never releasing to block a linebacker. I I agree. Um, I, you know, at a certain point, if, if the, if the offensive line isn't getting better as much as we kind of want to hope that Fry was the right choice, at what point should we we should we be seeing more improvement out of the offensive line? Because I don't know that we're seeing improvement out of the offensive line. Even if the talent's not there, we should be sinking. Uh, not sinking. We should be seeing incremental C sink sink. We should be seeing at least some incremental improvement from the offensive line. And I, I don't think I'm seeing it. Wait, you ready for some grading, Jared? I'm ready for some grading. All right. Then while we're putting that up here, Jared. Uh, I don't think they've gotten worse, Austin. I think the competition's been better. Oh, and by and by the way, Jared, as you're pulling that up here. Oh, uh, no, that, that 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 oh. um let me let me pull up the correct. That first punt here, Jared. 
that first pint definitely definitely was a um uh a botch snap actually oh okay yeah hold on let me see if i can do this real quick here so let me see if i can do this real slow so oh, if you boy. watch the ball there you you're, see you're that gonna, hit you're gonna get us dmca'd <laughs> <laughs> you can see that hit the oh yeah it hit the um hit the ground there and then over to and then over to the blocker there so definitely definitely was not a a fake punt call there fair enough yep all right jared let's give our gradings here so the coaching staff what would you give the coaching staff in this game um hold on i'm having trouble finding the damn grade uh can you just talk for a second longer sure um I know, I know we're really, really um, getting on the offense here, uh, and rightfully so. This offense should be should be uh, um, rolling on all cylinders right now. But the defense here, probably one of the best games we saw JT Tuimilau play here. He looked like an absolute monster in this game. Uh, you know, note note to note to other teams that uh, you may want to block number forty four because if you don't, he's going to be making some big plays, which he did uh, in this game here. Obviously, a lot of a lot of talk about Proctor and what he's gone through in his career at Ohio State, and finally sure. seeing him finally seeing him and being healthy and making big plays here. So happy to see him get that get that. Uh, that interception, that that pick six there, very very pleased with that. And then and then Ransom got another inter, got an interception as well. Eichenberg looked solid. Uh, Igbenosen too. I know I know early on Igbenosen was a almost a reliability on the other side of the other corner here, but he's really coming along too. And I thought I thought he had a pretty you good mean game as well. Liability. Liability. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He he ain't. Yeah. As, <laughs> yeah. Ex exactly. Uh, Iggy ain't half bad. I mean, I don't think I don't know if I ever would have said that Iggy was a liability. Um, he's I mean, it's just the teams are teams are going to target him because they have to target him. Um, the most successful play that Maryland had against Burke the entire game was a touchy pass interference call. That That's the most successful. That's the most success that they found throwing the ball towards Burke. Yeah. Of course. So, and, and we, we talked all, all episode already. We didn't even talk about, but then Zell's hit. I mean, we're, you know, we got a whole graded, we have a whole grade section to go here. So we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Coaching, coaching Jared. I'm I'm going to give the coaching staff made, made some, made some great uh, second half adjustments here, but why are we waiting until the second half to make these adjustments? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give the coaching staff a B. I, th I think a solid B. I'm going B minus. Um, Again, I understand what Ryan Day's trying to do as far as building the running game, but they were getting like two yards a carry, and you can't be waiting until late in the third quarter to, you know, decide you really want to start playing football now. Yeah. All right. Quarterback. I think we, I'm going to give, I'll give McCord a, a B plus. Definitely a very, very slow start, but he came along and made some great throws. And I mean, great throws later on. Like, like look, look at some of those passes to, to Marv. Yeah, the, the one he should have thrown it a little bit further. And if he threw it actually out in front of him, that was a, that was an easy touchdown for Marv there. But he's, he's making uh, smart throws and, once he actually settles down, he, 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 we see the talent. We see the talent in Kyle McCord here. And 
Um, really happy to see how well he bounced back after that poor, poor start. Yeah, bad start. Um, I'm still giving him a bit of a, a curve in the grade for being, you know, in his early starts. That curve is slowly flattening, however. Um, I, I But the, the reason why I'm going to go as high as an A- minus is one, because the offensive line is not doing him any favors. And two, because Ryan Day is not doing him any favors and I'm Ryan Day's biggest fan. I defend Ryan Day. You know, some people would say to a fault. But running the ball on first and second down and getting two yards and forcing your young quarterback to throw into third and 10, third and eight, third and nine, the entire first half. It's not, you're forcing him to only throw the ball in. I feel like Brian Hartline gets some blame as well. I, I don't care if Brian Hartline's calling plays or not. He's calling the plays that Ryan Day wants him to call. He's calling the game plan that Ryan Day is telling him to call. Um, it, the offense is still Ryan days, even if the individual plays are going through Brian Hartline. Um, yeah, I don't think that's how that works. All right, moving on. Let's move on to the running back here. I feel like I feel like this is deja vu. We've talked about this at least one, at least once every year for the past three years here. It's hard to grade the running backs because of how poor the run block was. But I expectations again. This is a veteran running back group here who should be dominating even even if you aren't getting the blocks you should be I, I still expect a little bit more with that so i'm gonna i'm gonna say like a i'm gonna say like a d plus say d Yikes. plus for me uh i i i'm gonna cheat personally i mean i i thought chip looked good considering what was or rather what wasn't being given to him um, you, you don't, you know, we're, we're without Henderson in this game. Um, I'm going to, yeah. Uh, Austin says it here, given it incomplete. Uh, yeah. Like I, I, how do I, how do I even grade the running backs? Train him took everything that was given to him. I, I don't think I ever saw train him like, I uh, train him did screw up a pass block pretty bad at one point. Uh, but as far as running the ball goes, I don't know if I ever saw Chip like miss a hole or, you know, I just I there there was never a hole to miss. Not hitting the hole. What hole, Woody? Running backs not hitting what hole? It's like you go to the gun range and they're out of targets. Like. Uh, what what holes? All right, let's move to the offensive line then, Jared. F. F for me. Not not we, what not what not what it needs to be. Not what it needs to be. I know we're supposed to be grading based off of expectation, but I just don't know how you. What the heck? I just don't know how you just give them what what is happening. I don't know how you give them anything other than an F at this point. It's it's just not it's not it. A, at a certain point, the expectation is and a certain point. I think November can be that certain point. At a certain point, the expectation stops being what you've done so far and what you need to be. And at a certain point, am I I'm using that's because I'm hitting control, not shift at a certain point. The expectation is that you be an Ohio State offensive line. Exactly. All right, tight ends here. I thought Stover had a had a solid game there. He got himself another touchdown in this game. I thought he made some good blocking here. So I, I, I'd say a solid B. I think a solid B for for the tight ends. A big big touchdown reception too. 
Um, and it's what, what, at what point do we start also including the tight ends, however, in the run blocking issues? Yeah. And that's why I'm not giving them, giving them an A here, but I'm, I'm I will stick with, stick with my B rating. That's fair. All right. Uh, wide receivers here. So there, there, there's, there's a few things here. I mean, I, I think I'm going to give the wide receivers a, I'm kind of stuck between an, yeah, I'll, I'll just say like an A minus. I, th I think overall. Yeah, that's where I was going. Marvin Harrison is just men amongst boy, boys out there, even even not with him not being 100%. Losing a Mecca early on definitely uh, hurt. We'd love to. That early. Uh, but definitely like to see Fleming. Fleming made a couple of catches in here too. Always, always enjoy seeing Fleming being able to uh, make some catches in, in games as well here. And we got to see Tate as well with the catch too. But, but whenever, whenever uh, Emeka went down, Marv, Marv stood up and took so control here. here. Yeah. Yeah. And Xavier had himself a, a, I think it was a really important uh, catch too. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was a third down catch. Um, as many were again, Ryan day. And like, there were all, there were instances in which the wide receivers weren't getting open. But again, if you're, if you're only throwing the ball on obvious throwing downs, that's going to happen. If you're always behind the chains, that's going to happen. All right, Kyle. Um, are we going to have we ever given out an F before? Oh well, yeah, we have. Okay. First, first F of the season though. It was. Yeah. Uh, they deserved an M. We don't do M's on this show. M's are for the Tuesday show. Um, Kyle, Z I Xavier, feel like Xavier's catch was on a first down. <laughs> it was on a first down. I thought it was, it was a first on a down. It was on a first down. Okay. In the fourth I'm, quarter. I'm misremembering then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Defensive line here. Very, very pleased what I saw from the defensive line here. Uh, mentioned earlier, JT Tuimalau may have made his presence known at, at key points in the game. Hamilton made some great plays. Uh, Ty Leak as well. Mike Hall Jr., as well too that was a terrible what by the way I, I said earlier in the show two there were some terrible long yardage penalty calls the pass interference on on burke was terrible the roughing the passer on mike hall was terrible yeah i still I'll, I'll want more pass rush it isn't good enough for the d-line austin Maryland gave up three sacks in every game up until this weekend. They gave up three sacks against Ohio. Ohio State equaled the sack total for the entire year for Maryland. Maryland gave up as many sacks against Ohio State as they did in their five previous games. Four previous games? I forget. I count two. I counted two here. Uh, no, they should have had three sacks unless one of them no. was maybe for like a, a single yard or a no gain or something. Go so ahead here. JT had one and a half sacks and then Mike Hall had half a sack. That's it. Yep. Mm. Uh, I thought Sonny Styles had one. Maybe it, that was for a no gain. He had, he had a, he had a half a, half a tackle for loss they must not have counted it as a sack they must have called it a qb run either way either way back back to the back to the grading here i'll give the defensive line an a minus as well again a lot of it like holding down the the rushing attack of maryland here 
holding them to three yards a carry here and really keeping uh, Talia in, in check here as well. So we're really pleased what I saw from the defensive line. So I'll say A minus. Um, I, I really like the defensive line performance in this game. Uh, I'm going to give them a straight A. Okay. All right, that's fine. All right, line, linebackers. What, what would you grade the linebackers, Jared? Um, the linebackers, I, I thought played well, uh, especially later on when they were playing a bit aggressive, um, but didn't like them so much early in the game. Um, I, so I, it's hard, it's hard to say, uh, it's kind of like, uh, the PFF grades were bad. I'm I'm not I don't I've never really decided how seriously I take the PFF grades to be honest with you. Um linebackers were lost in the first half. I don't disagree. I I think I think they like a lot of the team played bad in the first half and well in the second half. Um at least not poorly in the second half. Uh, I wasn't like floored by the linebackers at any point in the game. Um I do feel like a lot of the plays that were being made were being made by the defensive line and the secondary. Um, Who would you grade them then? Probably like a C, maybe a C plus B minus. Yeah. I was, I was going with a C plus. I early on, I think, uh, uh, yeah, Woody, Woody said they were, looked lost in the first half there. Uh, I think there was a tackle that Tommy should have had. It kind of just bounced off. I think it was Talia. Well, but, Talia, Talia put a great but, move on him in open field. He, I mean, at a certain point, you do need to understand that the other team is also there, very talented. There, there is that too, yes. But looking at the other side of this, uh, Eichenberg, 13 tackles. Chambers, 7 tackles. Both leading the uh, leading the. Uh, Ohio State defense and total tackles here. I'll, I'll give them some credit there, but I think a C plus is uh, pretty generous. Uh, I think it's about right. I don't know. I don't know if I'd say it was generous. All right, defensive backs. I got to go with an a, a straight A. I think the uh, defensive backs. I totally. Hey, I'll, 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 go, I'll go with an A plus. Actually, there we go. Now, now we're they, talking. They. they under 200 yards allowed, two interceptions, one of them a pick six by Proctor. Yeah, this this defensive backs, corners, safeties are playing with their hair on fire here. Are yeah, you going A plus for both the corners and the safeties? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Austin says DBs all together in a, he says the safeties would get an a plus the corners would get an a, uh, no, nah, I, I don't agree. I feel like, I feel like most of the stuff that the corners gave up were when they were playing the ball deep and the throw was, and the ball was thrown underneath. Yeah. So, uh, so many, so many. Yeah, so many balls were thrown short. Um, I had I had um, rewatched the game uh, Sunday morning here. So many, so many of the balls were just thrown right in front. They were they were respecting the space, giving them five yards, and and they were they were taking those then. So it, it was just the defensive scheme and the the corners made the tackles when they needed to. So that's all you can really ask for. And hopefully, hopefully the ball is overthrown or off target and then make a play there, which you saw Proctor do. Right. All right. And the special teams, uh, three for three on field goals. Uh, the first punt was a muff, uh, snap from after relooking at the the first punt there of the game here. So, and that, and that led to seven points. So a essentially a turnover. I know it's not going to count as a turnover, but a 
essentially a turnover that Maryland only needed to go 30 yards to score a touchdown here. Now, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say a C, C for the special teams here. Um, you can't you can't fuck up a snap and get anything other than an F from me. Sorry. I mean, sorry, sorry to break out an internet meme from. I don't even know how long ago at this point, but you had one job. You had one job, CJ, you had one job. You can't, you can't fuck up a snap. No, you, 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 you just, you can't do that. All right. Can't give him an F because fielding was good. D minus. I mean. Maybe. This goes back to last year. I mean, the, the special teams in general are just lackluster on the team and have been for a while. It's almost like they need like a like a dedicated special teams coach. Oh, wait. Hmm. Let's move on to the Buckeye leaves, Jared. Let's hand out our Buckeye leaves. I, that's the, the joke, game. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's start with the offense here. Offensively, I'm going to steal it, Jared. Since I'm going first, I'm giving it to Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, that's a hundred percent fair. Um, I'm going to give mine specifically to second half Kyle McCord. First half Kyle McCord doesn't get a sticker. Second half Kyle McCord gets a sticker. In all honesty, like the team needs to be supporting him better. And by the team, I'm primarily talking about, you know, the, the coaching. Yeah. All right. Defense, Jared. I'll let you go first here. Defense. I, I, get, I get the easy one. Of course, I don't know. This, this one isn't fair because I feel like there's like several easy ones. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go with I'll go with the boy JT. Uh, I, I you know, he had a fantastic game. He gets a sack and a half, had a couple big. I mean, a few really big key run stops. Um. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with JT. Yeah, it was. Yeah, J, JT had one of his best games of the season there. Uh, Ransom, I know we didn't talk too much about Ransom, but Ransom is really coming along and he played, he played him, had himself a really good, really good game. Obviously, also he gave a lot of praise to Proctor there as well. But I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give mine to Burke. I'm gonna give mine to to Denzel Burke here, Mister. He get, he gets following the steps of uh, Denzel Ward, and yeah. he gets he gets his um, he gets his big boom on a Maryland wide receiver here, and he gets he gets the good old shout out from Gus Johnson about about not inviting him to the barbecue, and it's hurting his feelings. Yeah, part two. Yeah, yeah, Gus Johnson on both calls. It was against Maryland on both calls, and it was a uh, Denzel on both calls. Mm -hmm. It's good symmetry. It was, it was both just um chat chat ones Proctor, by the way. All right, that's fine. Um, and it's both where the ball was just thrown to the sideline, just straight across along the along the line of scrimmage there too. It yeah. was very, very similar type of plays. Yeah. Uh, my yes. wild card will go to Josh Proctor. Uh, <laughs> just for swinging the momentum of the game. Oh, man, my wild card. That's. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what I would give my my wild card to here. You know, you know, because we don't give a lot of we don't give a lot of love to this group here. I'm going to give it to my boy, um, number eight here, St uh, Cade Stover. I'm going to, I'm going okay. to give him to Farmer yeah, Gronk we, here. To Farmer yeah, Gronk. Yeah, we, we, we definitely don't ever talk about or give praise to tight ends on this show or in the Discord server at all. 
Here come the Yodis. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else? Chat, you, anything you, else you, you want? You to... got the wild card for. A wild card goes to Fleming for making McCord look good on a terrible ball. Hey, uh, Marvin <laughs> Harrison Jr. did that too. Uh, I saw Sony um, a couple of times. Yeah. How about Fleming? <laughs> Sonny or Fleming? Can... And anything else, Jared? Anything else about this game? Any other takeaways here that we have not covered? That we haven't covered? Yeah. Uh, the defense is great. The offensive line's terrible, I, I think, are the two big takeaways, although we talked about both of those things already. Um, I'm losing faith that the offensive line is going to get significantly better. Um, and that sucks i feel good about our kicker thank you woody thank you for bringing some positivity to this um i'm 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 losing faith that the offensive line is going to get significantly better and you know and we'll talk about some of the other teams and some of the other games around college football on the tuesday show on collegiate chaos um but i i'm looking at georgia and i think georgia's who started slow and was not having a great season early is starting to figure things out. Yep. They, and I look at, and I look at Alabama and I see a team that by Alabama standards is lacking uh, talent and explosiveness on the offensive side of the ball. But I'm seeing a team that's starting to kind of figure things out. And I see Michigan who had an issue of starting slow and their offensive line, not looking nearly as good as it should have looked. I'm seeing Michigan starting to figure it out. Yeah, this is and, this is the week that this is the week you saw Georgia and Michigan finally having like a full game of looking good. This, this was their first this was their first game where they looked like the team they should be. And you know, Kentucky, you know, and not not that Kentucky is some sort of amazing football team. They, you know, but they, they probably deserve to be ranked about where they were ranked. Um, yeah. And we'll, we'll talk Which about that. Where Maryland should have been ranked, but either way, yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think that is it for the episode, Jared. Um, I don't think we have anything else in the, in the mailbag here. So I think, I think we can go ahead and wrap this up here. Oh, Oh, the Ohio state early on Ohio state and Purdue game this weekend is a you guys Ohio answer state. my asks loop gas question did you well house Ohio state is a 20 and a half point favorite in this game early early on uh real quick ask loop gas question what are the odds ohio state has at least two running backs declare at the end of the year very good very good yes and th- and then that's going to be bring up the next question because i know there's some rumblings about two running backs about maybe wanting to transfer out because they haven't seen the haven't seen the field here but you know you, you lose two maybe three running backs this off season here i there's I, these are- I, I would i would i i i think they i think they'll want to stay because of that yeah uh there's i mean between running out of eligibility and <laughs> I'm just saying chat. Sorry. <laughs> between between Henderson going to be jumping for the pros and some other guys just losing eligibility. Um, there'll be a, a lot of running back turnover at the end of the year. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's it. That's the end of the that's a, that's the end of the show. Um want to encourage everyone to come hang out in the discord server where we watch football games on Saturday. Um, you know, maybe, maybe if a, if a game, if there's a certain game that might be difficult for some people to find, we might be, you know, sometimes those end up getting watched, but, uh, you know, no guarantees. Um, and we just, we talk shit and we hang out in the discord server all the time. And it's a lot of fun and you should come hang out too. And if you want an enhanced discord server experience, you can hop over to the Patreon 
uh, where for $3 a month or $32 a year, you can support this show financially by becoming a patron. Uh, that being said, the Discord server is like 90% free. You can do 90%, probably 95% of the things you want to do in the Discord server totally for free. So, you know, you can come hang out in the Discord server. And if you like it and you want to get the rest of that, well, then you can you can sign up afterwards. But, you know, don't if you're you're on the fence about the dis about the Patreon, just come hang out in the Discord server first and, you know, test it before you buy it. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? How about we talk about another Ohio State quarterback, CJ Stroud? Killing it. He is. And he now has the record in the NFL for most pass attempts to begin a career without an interception. I thought he already had that. Um, did we jump was, the gun? No, he was, he was up there. Um, with other names, I think I think to start this season, but but now, but now he is um, he has the record for like starting at the NFL and how many passes you go before you throw the first interception. Cool. He had a game-winning drive, except their defense giving it up in the end. Yep. I didn't see that game, but I did see that highlight. Um. And by the way, Fields, people were Fields had a rough start to the season. Um, I blame Chicago, not Fields personally, but uh, he's had a couple good games recently. Uh, just killed it on Thursday night football. Uh, four he also had a, yeah, four touchdowns, almost 300, 300 um, passing yards. And he ended up with uh, yeah, another 57 on the ground there. So, yeah, over over 300 yards of offense in that game. Yeah, and he had a he had a great game week before last. It's just that his defense sucks, and yep. gave up a huge. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, you know that this is this is how you continue to get more quarterbacks to come to Ohio State is by Fields and Stroud having success at the next level. Yep, all right, that's it, Jared. That is all I have. All right. Uh, Tonight's ending music brought to you by Madison Pruitt. Uh, she's an indie artist out of the Cleveland area. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to, and Burrow, yes, and Burrow. I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Madison Pruitt. <laughs>